In this lesson, we're going to learn about variables and loops. Now, I kind of already showed you what a variable was, but I'm going to formally introduce you to them here. And we'll also learn about loops, how to loop through different statements. Now, if you've done any work with Visual Basic before, you probably are going to know everything in this lesson, but watch it anyways because you'll get to see some ASP-specific stuff as well. So, this is variables and loops. Okay, so here we are back in our script. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Goodbye. All right. You know what? I'm going to get rid of this stuff, too. We don't need any of this stuff. Get rid of the hello there. Go to my home page. All that stuff. So all we have is this. And really, you don't even need this stuff, to be honest with you. We can get rid of that stuff, too. All right. It's nice to have there, yeah, but you don't have to have it. Okay. What I'd like to do is, I would like to simply display the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the screen. That's all, nothing fancy. All right, and I'm going to do this with response.write1, and then I could do it again with 2. I'm going to copy this, right? Copy, paste, just change that to a 2, and then a 3, and a 4 and a 5. All right, response not right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Save it. Let's preview it in our browser. And look at that. Oh my, how nice, how pretty. That works fine for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What if I want to do 100? Well, that becomes very cumbersome to sit here typing in response not right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, down to 100. That is where you might want a loop. So you can loop through the numbers 1 through 100. So let's get rid of all this stuff again. Now what I'm going to say this time is, I'm going to say 4, the word 4, x equals 1 to 100. Okay? Enter, tab in, response dot write x enter backspace and then the word next what's this going to do well it's going to start a value called x which is called a variable talk more about that in a second it's going to assign it to one do this then go to the next value what's the next value two then three then four all the way up till it hits a hundred that's called a for next loop. Let's see it in action. I'll save my page and then refresh my browser. And there we go. Now they're all clumped together because I didn't tell ASP to put a blank line after each one. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 9, 10, 11, 12. They're all clumped together. Let's do this. Let's insert a line break after the X. So I'll say ampersand or add this onto the end of the line. And then inside of quotes, a BR. I'm not going to use a paragraph tag. I'll use a line break. BR is a line break. Save it. Back to my browser. And then refresh. And there we go. And if I scroll down, grab my scroll bar here, you can see there's all my numbers. All the way down to 100. Now, don't type in really, really, really big numbers like a million or two million because it'll take your server forever to do it. All right. So there you can see how I've looped from 1 to 100. Now that is a basic for next loop. There are other ways of doing this. Now, there's different kinds of loops, and depending on the situation that you're in, you might want to use a different style of loop, but they all kind of do the same thing. For example, instead of a for next loop, we could do something called a while loop. All right, A while loop looks like this. You say x equals 1. You set the value up front, you say, while x is less than or equal to 100, do some stuff. What's the stuff? Well, the stuff is the same. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste it. Copy and paste my stuff. Okay? Now, with the while loop, we have to manually increment our value. So, I'm going to say, x equals x plus 1. Don't forget that. If you forget that, you're going to create something called an endless loop, which means it's going to keep running and running and running and running until your server eventually times it out. All right, we'll talk about server script timeout values in a future lesson, but it might run for like 10 minutes. 
which will bog down your server and take valuable processing time. And if you have a, an error in one of your scripts that keeps doing that, and 100 users are doing it, you could cause problems and even lock your server up. So be very, very careful. All right? So we've incremented our value, x equals x plus 1, and then type in wend, which is short for while end. All right? That's the end of your while loop. Now, save it and preview it in your browser. A refresh. All right, now my page got longer because you can see there's two different loops here. The while loop runs first, and then the for next loop runs right after it, right? Because I left it down here. So x gets set equal to 1. That's my variable, my memory location. While x is less than 100, do some stuff. Write it out, followed by a line break. Increment the value. Now it's 2. While n says go back up to here. And continue. Is x still less than 100? Sure is. It's, it's 2. Write out a 2. And now set x equal to 3. And continue doing this until x is greater than 100. All right. As soon as it hits 101, it pops down to here. Because we're done with our while loop. Now, 4x equals 1 immediately sets x back to 1. You can keep reusing these values if you want to then this loop runs while x is 1 to 100. The nice thing about the for loop is that the for loop will automatically increment this value by 1 for you. You don't have to do it yourself. So I tend to use for loops more than not if I know what the values are always going to be. The reason why you might want to use a while loop is because sometimes you don't. Now one thing that's important to note here is notice how my x is not inside of quotes. If I actually put x inside of quotes, what am I doing? I'm displaying the actual letter X. Okay? Anything inside of quotes says, show me the actual letter X there. And if I refresh that now, look what I get. I get 100 X's. See that? There's 100 X's. All right, then my second loop runs. If you want the value of X, which is a variable, I'll leave it like that. Now, I've used the word variable a couple times. What exactly is a variable? Well, a variable is simply a location in the computer's memory that stores a value. Okay? And when I say right up here, x equals 1, the compiler automatically takes this, this name, x, and just creates a spot for it to store that value. Okay? I could have called this anything. I could have called this my counter. Okay? You can call it anything you want to. In fact, you can use as many variables as you want to. For example, I could say up here, let's create a new value. Let's call it, let's say, max value equals 100. So I've just created a new variable name called max value. And I'm going to replace the 100s down here with max value. I'll just copy and paste, right? Copy, paste, paste. Now I haven't changed anything. But now I've said, if x is less than or equal to max value, what's max value? Well, it's 100. How do I know that? Because it's stored in this variable. That's all a variable is. It's just a name for a number, a name for a value. Now, officially, officially, you're supposed to dim your variable names, right? Dim max value, okay? And if you've done any work with Visual Basic or VB.net or any of those other programming languages, some languages force you to dim your variables. In ASP, you don't have to. We'll talk more about this when we talk about explicit variable declarations in a future lesson. But for now, don't worry about it. I'm going to get rid of that dim statement. Okay. For now, just remember you can take a name and set it equal to a value. So now when I run this, this gets replaced with 100, and then the loop runs. That's all. That's all a variable is. Here's a little twist for your for next loop, watch this one. Let's see you want to run backwards. Say for x equals 1, 2, max value, right? We're going to say for x equals max value to 1, step minus 1. In other words, start at the top, start at 100, count backwards to 1 in negative 1 increments, right? Save that and preview it in your browser. And there we go. See that? Comes up to 100 and then back down again. And you can change that step value however you want to. For example, you can say if you want to count up by fives, let's say, for x equals 1 to 100, or excuse me, max value, step 5. It's going to count up in fives. All right, refresh. And we started at 1, so the next value was 6. Saying 1, 6, 
11, and so on. Or you can say 5 if you want to start at 5. Right? There's all kinds of things you can do with these loops. 5, 10, 15, 20. All kinds of things. And we'll do a lot more with loops. Loops are the backbone of programming. Loops in the if-then statement.